Hey everyone, Lego is back again with a little bit of an engineering project this time because I thought why not and partly because it just ended up that way so part way planning, part way happenstance my idea here was to make a very well known phrase trust me, I'm an engineer and make a bit of an engineering project out of it so this started off as a simple project and then it grew very ambitious and then it scale back down a bit to something more realistic. Um, so what you're seeing me do right now, and, and for the most part of the first 10 minutes or so, it's going to be much planning and a little bit of calculation, but mostly planning, because I had these simple five words, and I wanted to arrange them in an interesting way and have them interlock in a bit of a non-traditional sense. So for anyone who's ever had to work with gearing ratios, um, and meshing gears in general, you need some some ratios, you need some properties to fit between one gear and the next. And that's what you're looking at right now. A very rudimentary, quick back of the napkin, um, not calculation, it's not even a calculation, it's just adding up the ratios and making them proportionate to one another so that when I make the teeth, I know they'll have the same module. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail about what any of, that, any of that means. Basically, I'm scaling the gears relative to each other so that they are supposed to be compatible, all else being equal. So I made a quick and dirty table there to get my five words to where I wanted them, thinking that this would be the sum total of the gears involved. And uh, as it would turn out, it was not that simple. But uh, at the moment, I'm just experimenting a bit with putting some of the generated gears into place and seeing if my methodology at least is sound because if there's anything wrong with the way that they render gears in this program relative to how you actually make uh, gears mesh and uh, the modularity of the actual calculations if that's different i need to know now before i go too deep into this but it works out pretty well you have not a lot of options, but you do have the um, contact, of, contact of angle, standard 20 degrees, and you do have the actual, uh, um, you can specify the amount of teeth and the radius of said teeth, so, or the height of them as they call it, but it, 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 it ends up being the same thing. So a little bit of some uh, scaling, I suppose it is at this stage. I'm not too into my whole methodology yet, um, something I'll have to rectify in order to make this work the way I thought, because at the start, at, at this time, I thought it would be simple, so just a few numbers would do, but um, that did not uh, end up happening. So abandoning the idea of the actual gears for the moment, because I did too much rescaling, I did too much remeshing, and it just got out of hand. Instead, what I did was I just simplified it down to the actual um, I've forgotten what it's called in English, but the, the, the actual diameter of the teeth meeting when they mesh. Um, so yeah, what you're seeing me do right now is testing the gear live path effect to see if that was useful in any way and it was not uh, it's not made for this application it's made for whimsical reasons and for whenever you need something that looks visually impressive but once you look closer at it it doesn't doesn't make sense so that was not for me unfortunately even though it would have made this project a lot faster I uh, sat down and made a sketch of the actual words and letters and the grammar that I was going to need to get a better idea of how many gears am I actually going to need, how many gear ratios am I going to need, and how many of these uh, are, are going to have to interact. Because I'm trying to think layers into this as well. They're not all in the same plane of existence. Some gears are behind or above others. And I want to convey that in this rudimentary sketch. 
as far as the actual technical details of this project, there's not really much into it. There's five letters, or sorry, five words, as I said, and uh, none of them are very complicated. I uh, was a bit lucky, I guess, in the actual amount of lines for this project. There's not a lot of lines, and that made my life a hell of a lot easier because I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with just stray lines going back and forth. In some systems, like clockwork especially, which is no big secret, it's a big inspiration for this particular style I'm doing right now. Clockwork lends itself really well to this sort of depiction. But um, one of the things that it does very well as well is doing away with pointless lines and make them interact with the rest of the actual um, text. Not so with this. So I need somehow a way to incorporate my lines in a way that makes sense in the context of this little assembly line I'm making here. And uh, for that reason, I'm very happy that there's not a lot of lines to deal with. I did make um, a couple of interesting choices, not unreadable choices, but they are a little bit cheeky in terms of how I chose to put the lines in a tangential to the letter it's actually supposed to meet with. So especially the uh, last I you're seeing on screen right now is a little bit cheeky, but it's it works out. So I'm not too concerned with it. The rest of the lines I've either managed to make tangential to something else, almost like a timing belt of some sort, or uh, in one rare case, I just made traditional lines meeting dots because I didn't, I couldn't figure anything uh, out that wasn't a, a more clever than that. So I had to make do with that. And uh, otherwise, there's not a lot of dots either. Really happy about that because that means that I have to limit the amount of times I make up some hole in the gear or make a little um, rivet or something to uh, explain why there's a dot in the middle of something. Now, I am pretty happy with the final placement of the letters and I have a rough idea of what uh, is going to be contacting uh, with what. And uh, for this reason, I made a little spreadsheet on the side there, just noting down the relative radii and the, the diameters of the meshing. Uh, still can't remember what it's called in English. It's like the actual diameter of the gear that matters, um, that matters, with, that meshes with the next gear over. Oh, the pitch, the pitch diameter. That's what it's called, the pitch diameter of the gears. Noted that one down relative to each other. What a boom, what a bang. Uh, as long as I use the same modular size for all the gear heads and the profiles are the same, everything should mesh perfectly. So that is um, that's the bare bones of it. And uh, what you're seeing me do as I go along is I'm generating the gears and I am uh, rounding it up or down to the nearest whole tooth, depending on whether or not it's the rack or it's the pinion. Uh, because it has a little bit to say in terms of how well it's going to mesh. Basically, you want the smaller gear, which we call the pinion, to have more teeth than the than the um, than the rack. In most cases, unless you can get out of it in another fashion. Sorry if there's some noise behind me. I have a, an open window right now. Uh, anyway, generating the gears, putting them in place, getting a rough idea if this works out. It seems to go on so far. I'm a little bit annoyed at how the scale of the gears itself doesn't actually um, really fit with the little generation window there. It turns out bigger than I think it should be. But as long as I scale it back down to its intended size, everything works out. And now I'm just trying to see if I can figure out the actual layering of the different things. And I'm also starting to think a little bit about how the text is going to interact with these gears because I can't just have it floating around. There's going to need, I'm going to need some sort of 
excuse. At least that my, that's my thinking at the moment. I need some sort of explanation for why there's this text on it. Um, and I'm also going to have to cheat a little bit because I need a few planetary gears for the inside rather than the outside. So I need essentially the reverse profile at the uh, at the edge of the sentence circle. And instead of actually doing a good job of making a straight rack and pinion, like a, like a straight rack, uh, and then bending it using the bend tool or the um, pad along path or anything that could put it on a curve and then make that uh, in that manner, I decided instead to just take a gear and roughly just carving out the opposite profile from the negative space of the, well, the space between the teeth. So that's what I ended up doing and it works out okay-ish in this, but it's not something that will stand up to very close scrutiny if you ever take a look at the actual tooth profile of that. Um, but it's good enough for me for now. In hindsight, I probably should have just generated an actual rack and just bended it into a circular shape so I had a better realistic chance of meshing that together but I think it actually came down to line widths in this case to make it work and uh, I had to do that twice one for the big gear and one for the little planetary gear in the engineering word where I cheekily put two E's inside and made them mesh not only with the planetary gear but also with each other um, which is, you know, impossible in real life, but it looks cool. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to allow it. So that's what you're seeing me do right now. I'm just trying a few tricks uh, in terms of filleting to trying to invert the, the tooth profiles, at least visually. Now, apart from the planetary gears and, and the gears in general, um, there's not a lot to this project, actually. It just took some finagling to get that right, and also it took a surprising amount of time to actually make the various different colors for the gears because I need them to be flat. I mean, they're flat gears, they're flat surfaces, and flat surfaces just aren't very interesting to look at. Um, no matter what gradient you put on it, unless there's some dynamic element that you can try to, to give it a, a sort of 3D effect. And there's not a lot of 3D effects you can add to a gear. So I tried playing a bit around with the teeth it's themselves, adding some subtle shadows to the edges to see, make it look like they dip a little bit, make it look like they actually have some wear and tear without actually going the extra mile and adding textures to everything because that would be a bit of too much and I don't want to detract from the already sometimes hard to see actual text on top because I ended up doing black text. I didn't really do anything with the letters themselves. Instead, I tried to incorporate them into the actual gear pieces as well as codes, as well as I could. Um, trying to make it look like there wasn't just some random lines of dots floating in, in nothing. Um, well, what else do we have here? We have a little bit of, what am I doing there? Oh, this is the hierarchy I was talking about earlier, trying to figure out which letters or rather which gears are above which other gears so without actually cutting anything that was my goal at least without cutting anything I was just trying to settle the hierarchy of the actual different um, different gears and I also at this stage as you can see there are hollowed out some of the sections to make a bit of a more visually interesting look instead of just a flat disc with teeth oftentimes you'll find for one reason or another probably possibly mostly weight, but also sometimes because you need a cam or a gear to mesh inside of a pin or whatever reason there might be, 
sometimes you need to remove sections of your um, cross area. And that's what you're seeing me do here. I'm just taking a few basic radial shapes and I punched some of my material away to leave behind a more interesting looking gear. And I did that on a couple of different ways and a couple of different sizes as well. So just to just to break it up a bit and not make everything a flat disc. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about here. Um, I'm not really sure there is a lot more to talk about uh, without spoiling what's coming in the next few minutes. Um, I guess it's now secret to say that I am an engineer, so this message was a bit uh, close to me. But at the same time, I would not consider this a big feat of engineering to make. So uh, please don't judge me on my engineering skills in this project. I have other projects that are more, I guess, indicative of my skills. So uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't actually pitch this as my uh, engineering debut anywhere. It's just, uh, I just, I just like the idea of gears. I've seen projects that used gears before. I've done projects that used gears before, but never in, you know, actual mechanically sound ratios it's just it's usually just the the you know the comic gears the uh, the visually interesting looking gears with like 10 or 12 teeth that wouldn't ever work in real life just impossibly meshing with something else not, e not even meshing at all just you know those gear icons you see everywhere just a, a, a gear with like six or seven teeth no one would ever 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 use something like that but um, they just look simpler and they're easier to make so people use them um, this is a project that used actual t squares. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm sticking with. If anyone asks, that's the reason I made gears in this project. I wanted to make realistic, um, proportional looking gears with actual gear modules that meshes together because, you know, the math checks out. Even though the mechanical side doesn't, because you see if that were to try and run in real life, it would lock up immediately because you have gears that are well, they're meshed to more than one and the, 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 it, it doesn't check out if you look closely at the actual rotations and the way the gears are supposedly interlocked, it, it wouldn't work out in real life. But anyway, uh, setting that aside, the, uh, the idea was to make some gears that actually geared, if that makes sense. And um, as, far, as far as colors go, let's talk about colors a bit. We, 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 have, arrived, we have arrived at the colors. Um, I've seen mostly three types of gears. I've seen plastic gears, I've seen brass gears, and I've seen actual uh, steel gears. And um, that's the colors I thought I'd work with. So what we have here is my attempts at making some brass gears which are what you're seeing right now. I am attempting to make some um, what's the word? Not bronze. It's not copper. I think it's copper actually. I might, I might actually have written copper. I think it's copper gears. So copper gears, brass gears, and then some uh, steel gears. So uh, that gives me the opportunity to make some contrast between the different gears and the different assemblies without ever actually making some weird color that doesn't look like it fits in. So that's my excuse for that. Uh, some of them are more polished than others, especially the metal gears are very easy to make. It's very easy to make the shine on that. The copper gears are the most difficult and I struggle every time I make some bronze or or copper. I, I struggle with the, the palettes. I uh, don't really seem to find the right colors for that ever. But uh, some attempts are better than others and uh, over time I worked out mostly how I wanted it to look. And at the same time 
I need to consider the text as well because I can't make it too black. I can't make it too dark. Otherwise, you can't see the text. And I can't make the different visual elements too different from their surroundings because I still need the reader to intuitively understand that this shape is as supposed to be a letter while at other times there may be a shape that is just there as part of the background. And I, and I, and I need that to visually stand out less than a shape that is supposed to be a letter. I can't 100% rely on the strokes of the actual letters because some elements don't have strokes, uh, in particular the dots and the punctuation. So in some cases I need to be deliberately bland or deliberately make it stand out even more than it's otherwise should have because I need to pay, uh, make the reader pay attention to certain shapes and discard others. And this will be more apparent as I go into the last phase later. For now, I'm still figuring out the contrasts of the actual readable sections. As you can see right now, I'm adding a line to the end, but in order to make that line fit in with the rest, I continue the line on the other side as a sort of bearing or, or some piece of metal that held up a gear or held something in place. So I incorporate it into the actual mechanical device besides adding it to the text. Now, trying to sell the idea that this is a 3D component with 3D elements in different depths is uh, a bit tricky and I tried my best at making some believable objects like stick out of the uh, of the of the screen without resorting to mesh gradients and without resorting to the different ways you can make 3D effects appear by using interpolation because I didn't really want to go that far it was never supposed to be that complex, so I'm merely doing um, some circular gradients to add sort of different, I guess you could call them faces of the gears, some, uh, some gradients that are supposed to be reminiscent of some curved surfaces or domes. I have an idea that I want to make a few like uh, rivet heads, sort of half domes that stick up a little bit to give the illusion of something being held in place. That also gives me a bit of an excuse for why I have some dots here and there. And for the background, I didn't really have a clear idea of how deep this me mechanism was. And in my head, this was like a pocket watch or something. So it wasn't super deep. So it wasn't supposed to be pitch black inside. But I also need something in the background that isn't interesting enough to confuse the reader and, and generate too much noise. There's still a very simple sentence hidden here, and I don't want to detract from that by having any busy backgrounds or anything that would make everything more confusing and, and, and too detailed. So uh, after trying a few different um, ways of making some noise, with the uh, different filters, I ended up just making a simple gradient background. And as you might see in a moment, I think, yeah. So I made a simple, um, what's the word? I made a Clip group, that's what. I made a clip group and added a shadow inside that to just give it the idea of, you know, there is some depth to this, but there's not a ton and I don't really care for it. Um, at the same time, I'm starting to add some shapes beneath the different gears to indicate what sits above what else. So I'm adding some simple shadows to deal with that the same way I did with the allotheometer way back in the day. And, um, that will do it for the different layers of gear. So I am just, I'm just stopping there because otherwise it's going to go on and on and on. Um, 
and this is also um, I mean at this, at this stage I know what this is going to end up like so there's not a lot left to uh, to contemplate for me I'm just finishing up the details and adding some extra shapes and contrast as I go but th there's not a lot left undecided here this is pretty much how it's going to end up one thing I did feel like I needed there was the big gear there was a bit empty so I added a non-functional part in the middle that I hope is bland enough to not be mistaken for a dot because if that is if that is taken as a dot it'll be confusing for everyone so I'm uh, crossing my fingers there same with the extra dot here which is not a dot at all it's just supposed to be a rivet or something that holds that gear in place now for that that first word is actually a bit of a, a lucky decision I guess for me um, I happen to have four letters with the same structure so I made this four-sided it's not even a gear it's just a sort of protrusion that happens to have four divots and uh, I don't know I, I don't even know what it's supposed to be but anyway uh, that made it blend in really well because most of the other letters in the other words don't really have an excuse for being there they're just sort of there especially the the G the um, the big Omega shape it's just it's really mal 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 placed it's just it's just sitting there but the first word is uh, really well disguised because you have that symmetry and uh, I really like that it happened to work out that way and uh, doing a bit of shadow work there as well for the line there making it blend a little bit better and then I made some contrasts on the actual letters for the second word because I need the punctuation there and I need that to stand out enough that people will notice and use that punctuation otherwise it's going to be noted as an error and uh, here I play around with something I very rarely play around with I play around with the way that the transparency of different objects blend together um, it's something I don't really understand fully because I never ever use it but I in this case I really wanted the, the um, the big, uh, the big disc of the gear to both have a radiant and a straight shine. So I combined a radial gradient, which I had the whole time, with a shiny straight gradient to sort of break up the flatness of the gear. And uh, I could have done that in other ways. I could have added a bit, little bit of texture. I could have added a little bit of a... I could have added some... Well, a mesh gradient comes to mind again, or I could have leveraged the fact that with the set clip groups, I could have incorporated some things unevenly, but I ended up just trying to do this, and I don't think it did a lot, but it did enough that you, you sort of get a shine that's not radial, um, and that's what I wanted. So in this case, it works out. Now for the three dots in the uh, in the last letter there, I made them debossed instead of embossed, just to sort of try something new. I'm not really sure I liked it, but uh, it works out as well as can be. Now for the last leg here, because I'm pretty I'm pretty much done with the with the text itself, and I'm pretty much done with the with the thing. Um, I wanted a little bit of a background, so I did what most of my engineering pseudo engineering projects uh, end up having as background I made a piece of well a literal piece of blueprint instead of making the grid as I normally use with a ruler and a live path effect I instead this time took the actual render tool to make a grid with a subgrid and uh, it worked out really nicely I'm not really a fan of how many groups you end up having to juggle 
but as long as you treat them all the same, um, it's not really a big deal. So I made the uh, gradient for this, as I usually do. I made a blueprint that needs to be a little bit bluer. And uh, then I added in this hash or, uh, or these, um, these random asymmetrical lines just in the background there for mostly aesthetic reasons. They don't really do anything, but I've had them in so many of my engineering projects that this is now a little bit of a tradition. Uh, it just adds a little bit of a little bit of a, te a texture is a strong word, but it adds a little bit of something to the whole thing, which uh, helps break it up and makes it less flat. Now with a blue blueprint, pretty much finally done. Um, I sat back and was very happy, but then I thought, hmm, I would like to see a black and white version. Now, sometimes when I make a project, I start off with a black and white version, especially if I know what I want. Um, in this project, I didn't know what I wanted, so I ended up just making the, the, the final piece with the color and everything at once first, but then the, half the fun of it is in retreating those steps, removing all the 3D effects, removing all the extra colors, removing all the overlaps, and then seeing how simple the project could have ended if I just stopped at black and white. So that's what you're seeing me do right now. I'm removing all the superfluous effects. I'm removing all the extra bits of blurry backgrounds and shadows and adding back in a lot of the outlines because I removed a lot of the strokes when I made the color work. It didn't really fit in then, but now I'm leveraging the fact that I have the strokes to, to work with in most cases. Working backwards, figuring out where I need to add in contrast, where I need to um, lower the, uh, the thicknesses to make everything mesh because suddenly you have a thickness to work with in the form of the strokes and that means that the meshing doesn't work out anymore. So I need to tweak that a little bit. But overall, um, when I got finished with the very few cuttings that I had to do to make everything work out, I was actually pretty happy with it because it looks it looks nice in its own way, less busy and less um, noisy, more streamlined, and more functional. So I I, re I really like this version as well, but I think I will stick with the finished colored one for presentation. But um, that was uh, a little five hour project with gears used semi correctly for once. And um, I hope you learned something, maybe, or at least just enjoyed it. And I will uh, see you another time. Bye.